want for places like this, wouldn't, wouldn't have anything. This place is really, really important. Now I've got everything back. I think it's a brilliant place. This is my best part of my life. Initially when we started Just Life it was simply a lunchtime activity on a Monday. But as things grew and we sort of got a bit more bits and bobs of funding and we appointed a part-time worker, we realised that we'd identified a real sort of major need in the neighbourhood. We went to the big lottery fund for a larger sum of money and were successful in receiving that. We're open all week so we see people maybe three, four, five times as much now as we did then. We moved here to be involved with a community project with people who are marginalised living in very difficult communities. So we moved here with the express purpose of getting involved in something. We'd befriended a number of people who had problems with drug use. Um, one man in particular we'd become really good friends with. In 2006 we heard news that he'd um, been released from prison and was clean and dry and was wanting to better his life. We heard that he'd been housed here in Gransmore Avenue and a few short weeks after that we heard that he died of a heroin overdose and it was at that point out of our grief and our sense of we could have and should have done more to help that we decided we had to act and, and do something to intervene for the many dozens of people that live in accommodation like this in East Manchester. I'm the nurse at the centre here, so my job is to try and pick up any health needs that people might have when they come in. House screening, wound care, lots of stuff around drug and alcohol misuse. You know, before we were you know, blessed with this funding, we were limping along from one pot of funding to another pot of funding and having the kind of security of a three year kind of thing has led us to be able to make more solid, concrete plans about what we do and how we work with people and in terms of our staff and you know the centre and things all of that is possible because we've got that security for for the three years that means we can build on that. Basically it just gives you something to do in the day. I was at my worst for four years as well in the past for me. Yesterday I'm bungee jumping for chat there. After my mum died, I got really bad into it, you know, into heroin and crack, really. I mean, I was on it for years and years. And then last April, I just had enough, so I got myself clean. And I seen this place, and I asked to do, uh, could I do a voluntary job? And they said, yeah. These 30, 40 people that come here every day wouldn't, wouldn't have anything. Gary, yeah, what he's done here is unbelievable. These are the terraces that we used to live on up until they pulled them all down. The plan was to rebuild all the houses, but obviously the economy as it is, has meant they've stopped building the new houses. I think sometimes you're spurred on by tragedy and grief, aren't you? You know, I have to say, still, since we've been, since then, there's not been the end of the death story here. Last year alone, we lost five service users unnecessarily, two murders in one year. It's just too much, and you, you know, we, but we're doing everything we can to try and make sure that people are accessing healthcare, are accessing treatment, are getting fed reasonably well but ultimately are getting moved from these places which are, are killing them. The best part is making progress really. It's not necessarily big steps, but it's about seeing people come in with really low self-esteem or really, you know, feeling like hope has gone really and being able to take them on a little bit of a journey to get in a bit more hope and a bit more of a future. But it's just a, a really good kind of feel good thing to do. And that's kind of what we're about, is helping people to feel better about themselves and about where they're at. People are coming in, they're coming straight into the centre, they're talking to our housing workers, they're getting help, they're getting moved on and they're getting, beginning a journey onto something better. Instead of being stuck here for sometimes 10, 12, 13 years. It just sort of becomes second nature to try and try and help or support in some way.